Okay, I did all four sides. So I'm gonna find the, pull the curls apart to pull the resist out. I feel like it's pretty well felted. I'm gonna take it to the sink and shock it in hot and cold water and that should pretty, pretty much seal the deal. So I'm gonna pull the resist out. Then you can, um, we pass the soap please. Mm -hmm. Then you can also take some soap on your hands and smooth this um, little crease out here a little bit. I feel like that actually, um, I was worried did I make that thick enough over that crease and it, it feels pretty good. Our soap so the soap is I mean it helps felt but it also just it makes your hands slippery so that it can do what it needs to do all right so what we're gonna do is actually move to the sink to show you the rinsing process and then we'll be able to show you um, how these look they're still gonna be wet but we can Show you how they turned out. Okay, I've got gloves on because there, our water gets really, really hot. So I run run the hot water and just squish it up. You can even um, bang it on the sides of the sink. Just anything that you do is only going to further felt it. And then once I get it saturated with hot. Then I want to shock it to cold. So I'm going to let that run to make it really cold. And even though it looks like I'm treating it horribly, <laughs> it'll still stay what it is. It doesn't hurt it. So now that it's all cold, I'll go back and forth, hot and cold, one more time. This also gets all the soap out. a fancy um, spinning machine but if you don't have a fancy spinning machine you could put it in your salad spinner or you can just roll it up in a towel to get as much of the water out as you can and then lay it out in the sun to dry okay our um, cloaks have dried and we have some issues that we're gonna fix that you could fix with needle felting forgive my hideous felting surface, but when you're working on something large, if you're flat felting 2D um, or doing something like this, this is a two inch foam insulation, which just works really well because it's firm and you can get it large and cut it to any size that you want. But um, sometimes um, I also use it with a stab it. I'll show you that in a second. Um, mine felted pretty well. There's a few spots where the first cross layer and the vertical layer didn't completely felt together. Um, Marsha's had a similar problem. This is her cross layer. This is her vertical layer. I think this was just a little thick. So um, what you can do is you can take your stab it, give me a stab it, and you can, you know, pick a section. And then if you want to, you can even, since it's open, tuck more uh, locks in there and then just give it a little bit of needle felting okay. like that. And I, I might do the same to mine too. And then the top looks good and it all looks smooth. This is probably your worst 
you know, seam or part of it. Right. But, um, so you have two choices. You can either put that in the back <laughs> or you can make that the spot where you cut the cloak okay. um, to make the opening. Okay. All right, so you can work on that. Let me see. Um, Nancy had a spot where when she folded this around, again, it feels kind of thick. I think it was kind of a lot. Um, it didn't felt to the other side. So she's got this little... Um, it could like fly away. It's like a little mm -hmm. fish fins. <laughs> and then um, we did notice when she took her um, resist out that she also had a lot of wool kind of off to the sides of the resist. And so it just brought up that as you're felting around the resist, kind of you can do motion to sort of pull the wool in so that it doesn't splay out and then felt like a a basically like a seam to the side of the resist or you know farther than the resist so to fix this I would just try to thin it out with a seam ripper a little bit just so it's not such quite a chunk get it a little bit more um, blendable and then again you could um, put the corner put it over the corner of a stab it or I should probably try to find something a little bit um, shaped a little bit differently, a piece of foam. But we're going to pretend like something's in there. And then needle felt that down. And it'll blend in. So I just need to make sure. So if you do that more, it'll start to blend. So seam ripper to get rid of the sharp or chunky edge, kind of. Fray it and then needle felt it. I'll find you a piece of foam okay. that you can shove in there. So I'm gonna do the same um, to the edge of mine, just needle felt these curls in a little bit, but otherwise it's pretty good. I didn't get too much where I had that um, cut out in my resist. It didn't really do too much. Um, I should have made it maybe a little bit deeper. But um, basically, once we're done sort of fixing our problems, we're going to cut up the center to open the cloak and then cut off to each side to create the definition of the hood. Okay, I'm ready to cut this open. So I picked which side I wanted to be um, the front based on not much, <laughs> a gut feeling. And then I just want to find the center. Actually, I'm going to go right here because there's a break in the curls there. And then cut up the center. And then wherever you want the um, hood, to, how big you want the hood to be and how long you want the cape to be, that's how you decide where to go from side to side. Like so. So now I've got a nice little hood and the cape can wrap around. And this is where I was trying to mess with the resist to create a little bit more space, um, basically where your neck would be between the hood and the um, and where it comes over your shoulders. But you can kind of you can actually kind of um, create that by stretching it and needle felting it. And what we're gonna do, I think these look nice with um, with some trim around them. So I'm going to use brown and what I actually like to do is take some brown wool and put it along the edge so that if there's a spot where the curls are a little thin or whatever it's not it doesn't show as much. So you're already like especially if this were white I would take um, a nice strip of white wool go along the edge and then put and then put the curls on. 
All right, I've got my brown core. It doesn't have to be core, but core just felts on so easily. And so I just stab it down the edge. I didn't mean to drop that on the floor. It just fell on the floor. And then I flip it over and I just let it wrap around this raw edge a little bit just to kind of finish off that edge. And again, you know, the curls aren't really going to wrap around. So we let this do that work. Now I have not done a ton of wet felting. Um, I bet you could, after you did the cut, if you didn't want trim, you could probably kind of rework it, you know, if you're with your hands to finish that edge that you cut open, you know? I think that's what, the way it works. Okay. And then I take the lock. Um, candy curls work great. Something with a good bit of curl because it, um, that's what makes it look really furry and fluffy. And I kind of actually unlock them a little bit and then just let them be all fuzzy as I stab them down. I'm just looking for a few other colors here. I got to, I'm good. I don't have that. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. That's a good one. Open them up a little bit and then stab them on. So I'm going to do, I'm going to trim everything. I'm going to trim the edge of the hat, like everywhere that I cut, I'm going to trim out. Okay, I've pretty much got my trim on. I did, um, I did a little bit of brown and green curls on the trim. And Marcia was just saying too, if you have a limited supply of curls, or maybe they have a little bit of variation in the dyeing, make sure that you work on each side at the same time. Um, maybe split them in half so that you're getting similar coloring on each side. Oh, you know what else could be cool? Would be an ombre that changed as it went all the way around. Mm -hmm. I don't know, so many things to do. So I'm gonna use this guy that I made um, to show how to I figure out where the arms go. It's not very scientific, <laughs> unfortunately. I kind of set them in here and then wrap Hey, Dad, we're filming. <laughs> My dad's visiting today. <laughs> they probably can't even hear. It's okay. Um, and then I just feel, I put a stand him up. Oh, he looks good in this one. I can't wait see him. Sorry, sorry. There we go. Um, but I just sort of feel where his elbows are, or her. Um, I'm, I want these arm slits. I want his arms to come out where the elbows are. And then my cloak is so wide that he's got um, this double-breasted thing going on. I'm not, I'm not having it just meet down the center. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to come off the corner of the hood down each side. And if I want to, I can um, I can measure that, but it's about um, about two inches. And then I actually take him out of here before <laughs> before I cut it. Nancy's handing me the scissors, 
So I kind of put this back together the way it was on him. And then come down that two inches and just start a cut. Make sure you keep it on the small side to start. Don't go too crazy because you can always cut it a little bit bigger. And then again, you can kind of work it with your fingers. You could re-wet felt it. You could um, you could needle felt it. You could you could stitch. You could do a little blanket stitch around it. Um, lots of different options there. <laughs> okay. Like that. So let's see if we got it. Got it right. There we go. All right, I decided to put a little brown fur ball on the tip of his hat, so I just want to show how I would do that. I would take some core, and I'm going to first make a little rectangle and just felt the tip into that, and then fold it around to make sure it comes all the way around the tip. So now I've got brown around the whole thing. And then I'll just fuzz out more locks and add them to each side of it. You still, you still, uh, video, video What's that, Dad? <laughs> Are you live over there? Yeah, we're still, we're still taping. Taping, taping. I need, I need needles. Come stick your face in the camera. Show I'm yourself. Stick my face in the camera. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. Take All right. Of but, yeah. Okay. So I just go around, and he's got a little poop ball on there. All right. So we had a lot of fun with this. Um, Nancy made this beautiful purple, gray to purple color scheme, which I love. She had a little bit of trouble with the point of her hood, so she took it down to make more of a of a cape. So that's one thing I love about felting is there's just, you can work with everything. <laughs> so forgiving. So I love that color scheme. And this is the, um, this is the Gotland, the silver Gotland. Marcia made this has um, goes from this beautiful, this is actually the green Santa bat, and then goes all the way down to brown with the brown candy curls, but then she used blue on the trim, which I just, I really like that choice. And then this is the one I made, and I've put it on my friend Lee, um, made this St. Nick, so it just was a good size, so I put it on there, but mine is, um, the red to green with brown trim. So, and the little poof ball on the hat. So we hope uh, you enjoyed this and had a good time and we'll share your pictures on Facebook. Our group is called Serafina Felting Fanfare and um, join the group because we, we share a lot of techniques and ideas and we draw a lot of inspiration from that group. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.